So dude, this game is like a totally different head. I mean, totally. What's up, Internet? Jay with Nerd Rage Against the Machine here with another review, this time of a game that's a little different. Uh, first off, my, my previous reviews were, were mostly older games. This is a, a relatively new product, but uh, it's also a very different role-playing game, and that is Tales from the Loop by Free League, or Free League Inn. It's a Swedish company that does a lot of little different RPGs, most of which use their Year Zero engine, and in that case, Tales from Loop is really no different there. It does use the same basic mechanics. You have four stats, three skills. It's a dice pool system where you need to get sixes or better normally to succeed. However, it's the genre and the background that make this game interesting and make it very different than, say, their other products like Forbidden Lands or Symbarum or even Alien. Tales from the Loop takes place in an alternate version of the 1980s and is actually the brainchild of an artist named Steven, Simon Stellenhag. Stellenhag is an artist who works in this kind of medium of weird tech with the 1980s. And first off, that's just a really weird concept for a role-playing game. Um, you know, besides, of course, the obvious, you know, this like Dungeons and Dragons, which is Lord of the Rings and, and several other fancy elements with the, with the serial numbers removed, or a straight-up license like Star Wars, Star Trek, Conan, etc. This game is literally based on artwork, and what that means is that the the developers had to put a lot, fill a lot more gaps in than say the people who write Star Trek, where there's you know 30, 40 plus years of material to work from. Uh, on top of that, you know there isn't a canon per se. This is all new stuff. In fact, Amazon does do a streaming series based on the same artwork. So that version of Tales from Loop I think feels very different though from the role-playing game. Watching it, I didn't feel like it was the same product. But that's me. I mean, again, same source of inspiration, but varying different tangents. Um, his artwork is astounding. It, it really is beautiful stuff. Um, it evokes a sense of wonder and awe. And I think it's an interesting idea for a role-playing game. Now, saying that, the game itself has you playing as kids, specifically from about 11 to 15. In fact, um, when you're building your character, you actually use the age for that's how many points you would um, put into your stats. With, if your age is lower than a certain amount, that's how many points of luck you get, which is kind of a background, you know, like a, a re-roll scenario or, or Benny's, Destiny Points, whatever you want to call them for other systems. But you're playing kids in the 1980s who live near this mysterious loop. Now the loop is basically a super collider where all manner of weirdness and super science come from. So this creates a lot of anachronistic technology. Your characters are likely to have seen a hover vehicle or you know, like something like maglev sci-fi kind of thing or seen dinosaurs or, or met advanced AI. However, again, the top computers of the day are like the Atari 800 or 400, uh, the Commodore 64. Um, if your kid is into video games, he's probably playing an Atari 2600, or maybe his parents are lucky and they got him a ColecoVision. You know, that, that's the era we're playing in. Um, and first off, that's one of the things that really my players went for. Um, the biggest drag I found when running this game was less about you know, mechanical quandaries, you know, well, how does this work, or, or even store, source material ones. It was all my players digging into this 1980s rabbit hole. You know, we got a giant robot on the loose, uh, can I make a Voltron reference? Um, you know, whatever happens, you know, there's dinosaurs, can I make a Jurassic Park reference? God, not yet, that's like 90s, man, come on. But that's the rabbit hole they fell down, and honestly, my players felt, spent a lot of time researching this stuff and kind of you know that became one of the draws of the game was you know 
My character's backpack would include the following items, you know, a Swiss Army knife, uh, the 1981 Playmate of the Year Playboy uh, stashed in a hidden pocket so mom and dad don't find it. That was the kind of mentality they put. Um, now, as far as the background of the, of the city that you play in, um, as a Swedish company, they, they've kind of made this interesting decision to cut it in two. You can either play in the Marlaren Islands in Sweden, or you can play in Boulder City, Nevada, for Americans. And all the supplements and material, anytime like a proper name is mentioned, they will cut it in half so that you have the Swedish and then an American equivalent, you know. So like Bjorn Bjornensen might be Bob Billingsley in, in the American version. Um, there's also rules in, in one of the supplements. The two supplements are Out of Time and Our Friends the Machines and Other Stories. But there are some rules in those supplements to build your own city with your own loop. In fact, when we played it, we ended up playing in uh, rural Wisconsin, pretty close to, um, oh, uh, oh, Stevens Point. So again, we did a very different take on it, which was totally doable. It's, it, it's very evocative of Stranger Things. At the same time, it's also not quite as sinister. There's no truly evil plot. It's more, you know, individual plots. On top of that, this is a great game, I think, for, like, say, a baby steps into something like Call of Cthulhu. If you're looking for a game where there's investigation going on, but at the same time you're not looking to have everyone just, you know, go mad and die. In fact, in Tales from the Loop, there are no rules for killing a character. When you take damage, what you take is a condition. Afraid, um, angry, um, etc., etc. And each of these, injured is one of them. When you take more than two of these, then your character is effectively out of it for the game. You know, they've just checked out, they're done, they can't move forward. But it's not a, a death sentence, like, say, something like Call of Cthulhu. Um, now, saying that, you know, actually the sequel game, which is, is very similar, is um, called Things from the Flood, which is also. Things from the Flood is set in the 90s, and you play teenagers this time. And they do include a death mechanic there, which is not too far off of what they've got here, just permanent. Um, but in this case, you know, I think it's a really cool concept to let you have that investigation style of play that you would find in something like Call of Cthulhu without, uh, without all the baggage that Cthulhu can bring, especially if your players are, are leery of that or afraid of that. Um, that being said, the other side of this, though, is that this is not a game for combat monsters. If you're the kind of guy who loves bashing indoors um, and that kind of action, you know, I, I want an encounter every game. We should have a big fight of some kind, whether that's Star Wars, Dungeons and Dragons, you know, whatever game you like. This is a game that will not satisfy because, you know, again, you're playing kids and most fights are just that little, you know, fighting the school bully and, 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 and getting your nose bloodied, not life and death struggles with lightsabers or, or battle axes or, or, or guns. So again, I can see where a player group might find that really frustrating if, if that's not their cup of tea. However, if it is your cup of tea, it, it's an amazing title. Uh, there's also a great little uh, starter set for those who want to try the game without getting full on. Um, one other thing I would recommend about the starter set is that it's, it's also a great resource because it comes with the maps. It even comes with the special branded dice for Tales from the Loop, which are absolutely not necessary, but it's kind of cool to have them. And if you look at the catalog prices of each of these products, it's actually just cheaper to buy the starter set and get a basic set of rules and a free scenario. My only complaint with the starter set is, um, again, you're playing kids and they're right at puberty, so they, they made the decision that... Um, there's a love triangle in the, in the pre-generated characters. It's a cool idea, don't get me wrong, but I could also see where players who are not very familiar with each other or players who just feel uncomfortable with romance in game, especially players you don't know, where that could be a real deal breaker. You know, this idea of I don't want to play, that I'm, I've got puppy eyes, for, uh, puppy dog eyes for Steve over here. I like Steve, he's my brother, man, but just, no, that just doesn't feel right. Um, but again, that's a pretty minor complaint, and, and you could always try to store your way around it. Um, this basically, the, the starter kit gives you everything you need to play the game without character creation. Um, and like I said, for the va value for money, I think it's worth it, especially for 20 25 bucks. I think I paid 24 on Amazon. 
And again, it's a great little intro to the game and gives you all those nice pre-generated resources. Honestly, this is a great game for people who want that investigative title. I know I've said that before. Um, but again, it's simple. It's also a great pickup game. Um, what I found works for me actually was our group has it in every other schedule. Like, you know, I, I run one week, another GM runs the other week. And when we would have a player missing, I would say, we'll just do Tales from the Loop and just assume that, you know, whichever player is missing, that their kid is, you know, off at band camp or, or you know, has a dentist appointment or, or any one of a thousand reasons why Timmy can't join the party in searching out this mystery, which actually works pretty well as kind of a filler game in that respect. Um, I would say this game gets at least four out of five stars, and the presentation and artwork alone are well worth it. Uh, and with that, I say um, enjoy and, and happy gaming, guys.